Hey babe, it's, it's Jean Quill here with Lux and Labelist. I'm here today to go over my top 10 styling tricks and must haves to maximize your wardrobe and minimize your spending. I know I sound like an infomercial, but it is very possible, I promise you. Just follow me on this journey. First off, I wanted to do this video because I know the 2018 spring season is really fast approaching and all of us fashion gurus out there are seeing all of these funky and fun and fresh style trends emerging. I just basically wanted to say, you don't need them, I promise. Or at least not all of them. I find that if you really want to look luxe and kind of effortlessly chic, you kind of got to bring it all the way back, all the way back to the basics. I definitely think everyone should invest in basics. First and foremost, that is the very, very, very first thing that anyone should have in their closet because it is so easy to build on those. Um, the very first thing as far as basics that everyone should own is a white and a black crew neck top, t-shirt I should add actually, uh, black tank top, more of a sleeveless top than tank top, so to speak, a pair of skinnies, both in black and a dark wash denim, preferably in mid-rise to high-rise. I think personally those are such a good fit on pretty much every body type. I kind of like that we're getting away from the super low rise jean. It's just really hard to dress that up and it looks extremely casual. With a high rise and a mid rise, it again looks really good on 99.99% .99 body types as well as it is just super instant chic when you throw on a great pair of heels, a, like a t-shirt or a dressy top and, and some lipstick, you're ready to go. I also think that everyone should have at least one black mini skirt. And by mini, I just mean something above the knee, not necessarily where all your goods are hanging out, but just something just above the knee. And I definitely think playing with the texture on that is great, whether it be more of a leather material, jean material, or anything kind of in between. Lastly, and I know everyone, everyone knows this, just you know it, like you know it, it's gonna be a white button up. That is like the one style staple that you have to, have to have in your closet. It's so easily versatile. You dress it up, you dress it down, it goes to work, it goes to play or whatever you wanna say, but there's so many really cute ways to dress up. A white button up, just a clean classic white button up with classic lines. Ugh, I love it. My second topic is definitely talking um, about neutrals and what that looks like. To me, neutral does not necessarily mean just white, black, or gray. I think there's so many colors that fit within that range. Um, obviously, olive is a really great color that goes with a lot of skin tones that just instantly goes with kind of everything in your closet. Um, tan is a very great color or some sort of tan is a very good color to have as a neutral in your closet. I personally think you could do the same with blush pink. Um, I think, again, on a lot of skin tones, it's a really good color. It's a basic color. It's not super loud or like in your face and it's really good to build on. My personal fave, number three, is monochrome. If you know me, if you follow me on Instagram, I am a monochrome lover. I just love how easy it is. I love how it's like, it just takes no time to put things together. I'm like, oh, wearing a green shirt, about to put on green pants. Wearing some burgundy clothes, there it is. But <laughs> that's just me. I love, 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 love monochrome. And it's so easy and effortless. The fourth thing I definitely, definitely think everyone should uh, just consider is having simple jewelry. Uh, simple jewelry, I think, just adds to an outfit. And say if you've put something together and you just need like a little extra pop of something, I definitely think simple like rings or earrings or maybe you have a watch, a statement watch for that day. I think that can just kind of elevate an outfit. What I love is Charming Charlie's because they are the perfect 
place when it comes to adding something a little bit extra to your outfit and just giving it like I said that little extra oomph to emphasize like hey this is clean cut it's put together I thought about every piece and it just seems like you put more into it than you really really need to uh, charming Charlie's is also great because if you haven't been there for one you've been under a rock but two if you have not been there everything is color-coded you don't even have to think about it you're like hey looking for a green watch there it is hey looking for some black sunnies there they go just saying charming Charlie's get the hook up number five I definitely think if you are dressing um, and putting outfits together when you are getting dressed just pick a focal point so like I said earlier I don't really think that we need to always go for every trend but I definitely think it's okay to maybe pick one or two of that trend or whatever trend is coming out like the PVC Hills or lately it's gonna be fringe for this spring season or day sequins. If you love trends, pick one or two of your favorite emerging trends and try to work them into your closet. So if you want that trend, like a sequin top, to be your focal point, make that your focal point. Let everything else be kind of muted and just focus on one thing. Emphasize one thing about your outfit. That is definitely gonna elevate it, the look, and help you just be chic and look luxe. Number six, I feel like once you get to a certain point in your wardrobe and you've already kind of built a really good solid base as far as your basics go, start mixing in like maybe a little bit higher level, designer level with a little bit of the lower level, um, more affordable pieces. I don't think that you need to go either or or it needs to be all or none if you can afford a lot of higher level designer level things more power to you i know i can't but that's kind of why i have a, a solid base a solid basic um kind of group in my wardrobe in my closet and i know that if i wanted to add uh, keep adding on to that or save for something really expensive to kind of mix with it that i could because i don't have to spend money on the next best thing or the next trend or anything like that. I would just throw something like this on. I feel like this is timeless. It's a dress by the way, but I would just throw something like this on and maybe a leather jacket over it. And if I wanted to add like a designer bag or designer shades or anything like that, just picking one thing I think really helps elevate your look for one. And two, it, instantly looks expensive obviously when you have maybe one item that is i definitely don't think that this is necessarily like fashion bible for everyone i i definitely believe in dressing within your budget and dressing within your means again my channel is called lux and labelist you do not have to have designer money to wear designer looking items or be chic the two do not coincide i promise you but if you do want to get to a point, like I said, where you are saving for these things because you already built up a really good base, I think that that would be a really good idea. Speaking of designer dupes, that brings me to my next style tip, number seven. Can't count. <laughs> number seven, uh, designer dupes. I think that, again, you should really shop for the budget that you have and not necessarily feel that you need to go outside of your means or spend a lot of money to look really chic and effortless um, style and everything like that. The good thing out there is that there are some designer dupes, some companies that actually make clothing similar to what's being seen on the runway at that time or for that season. A good place to start would definitely be Topshop and Zara. And those are just a few places off the top of my head that I know have on-trend pieces as well as really good prices. Um, Zara is like one of my favorite places to shop and I always tell people if I was a store I would definitely be Zara. I love how contemporary everything is and just super fashionable and super effortless and it's a really good price. I do shop there quite often. It is one of my, my vices I would say. But again Zara and 
Places like that would be really, really good places to start if you're wanting to have an elevated type style look without spending a lot of money. And that brings me to my style tip number eight. I definitely think it is worth looking into adding both a leather jacket and a jean jacket to your wardrobe. I know if you've seen other videos, you've been told this over and over and over again. I don't think that you necessarily need to spend a lot of money on these things. I found a really great leather moto jacket, which I actually talked about in my previous video, if you wanna check it out. But if you're willing to look, there's definitely really good leather jackets out there. It's really all about the cut. It's not necessarily about how much you spend on it. It just really needs to fit your body and fit kind of the look that you're going for. So you have to think when you're trying it on, what are you gonna be wearing this leather jacket with? Are you gonna be wearing it with shirts underneath? Are you gonna be layering with it? What are you really looking for it to do? So that way when you're shopping for one, it's basically going to multiply its use and you're gonna get so much, so much money, uh, so much of your money's worth out of that jacket just because you're gonna be constantly able to use it and reuse it and reimagine and reimagine it in different ways with different pieces in your closet. Something else to look out for is definitely a jean jacket as well, which I promise you, if you do not mind looking, they're in abundance, abundance at the local thrift stores. I promise you, I promise you. I probably own about six of them. I keep collecting because they're all different is what I tell myself in my head, but I probably own about six of them only because with Jean jackets in particular for me personally, I like them to be a little bit different. I have one that's like an oversized men's grungy jacket that I think is perfect for layering or putting over something like super, super feminine um, just to kind of balance it out. I have a couple that are a little bit more fitted, but maybe just a different wash. Again, I have a, probably about five or six of them. They are like my favorite thing, my favorite accessory, I guess, so to speak, to pair with. But I think those two things, the leather jacket, even if it's not real leather, which mine is not, so definitely, definitely, if you don't feel like you need to invest that money there, I would say maybe invest it in other things. They make really, really good quality um, non-leather, which would basically be the vegan leather versions of these leather jackets. And again, a jean jacket. Those are the two, two necessities that every girl needs to have in her closet. Style tip number nine, and I'm so sorry, my fingers are a little weird, but style tip number nine is definitely proportions. My mom always taught me kind of growing up just about proportions of clothing and just kind of where the radius, I guess, of where I'm showing. If I'm showing cleavage and arms, maybe I want to cover up and wear a pair of pants down below. And if I'm wearing, um, or if I'm showing, sorry, if I'm showing like my back, I definitely want to cover my front. If I'm showing all legs, I want to wear like something a little bit more covered up here. I think also a good notion to that is if you're wearing something tight down below like a tight pair of skinny jeans maybe you want to balance that out with a looser top um, up here and just maybe tuck it in so you can see like a little shape um, i also think say if you're wearing a baggier uh, pair of jeans that you want to tighten this up up here so that you have that that illusion or that shape that you're already creating um, with that look I think what I try to do a lot is if I'm wearing a tighter dress, like I was saying with my jean jacket, I try to pair it with something that's gonna be a little bit looser. So if I'm wearing a very tight dress, I may pair it with a long cardigan. Um, not necessarily like a sweater cardigan, but I do own a couple of different cardigans that are like real thick, like, like almost like a jacket. Um, so I always try to pair it with that. Or even um, I have a bunch of dresses that are just button up dresses, but they're really long like dusters. I think those are really, really great to pair with really tight dresses as well, because it's kind of that illusion of like, like I said, the loose and then the tight, and it's not too much of the same. Because sometimes you can get lost in those proportions and then that kind of makes everything look really sloppy. And lastly, style tip number 10, 
is just really pops of color. I know that a lot of people kind of put more colors together than my personal style. I think pops of color, whether it be in your makeup, your purse, your accessories, or your shoes, I think that is something to really elevate your style or your outfit from here to the next level. Basically, it kind of makes it from being just super, super, super monotone and nothing to like grab the eye to like, wow, like look at her lips or look at that purse or it just gives the outfit kind of a more tailored focal point where we know, okay, that's the that's super cute purse. If I see a girl walking down the street, she's wearing all black and she has a red purse. I'm gonna look at that purse first. That's where she wants me to look first. That's her focal point. Maybe not a good example, actually. I just thought of how that sounded. But <laughs> either way, like it gives the outfit something like extra. Like you were planning this whole thing out. It doesn't look like you just threw it on. I also like pops of color just being in different ways. Maybe it's your nails or anything like that. Today, for me, obviously, pop of color is this hair. I know it's a little bit different than when you saw me last. I promise I'm not in the witness protection program. This is gonna be my hair color for a little bit. I just wanted something different. But again, because I wear such neutral colors, like black and white, obviously, black, white, gray, olive green, burgundy, tan, I just like to kind of play up on my outfit a little bit more and add maybe something just a little bit different. If I'm wearing an all tan outfit, then I want to pair it with a black or red purse. Or if I'm wearing something that's all olive color, then maybe I want to pair it with something that's tan. Again, my style is very monochromatic and just very one color, very neutral, very clean but I know that people wear a lot of colors or a lot of different colors that I may not wear or have in my closet at the very moment. Like I know lavender is gonna be the it color for the spring season, but maybe buying like a statement sweater or a statement coat or even saying you're wearing all black and you wanna put on a lavender top to kind of break it up. That would be amazing and it would look really chic. Thank you for coming to my channel, guys. Again, Jean Quill with Lux and Labelist. If y'all have any questions whatsoever, I'd love to be able to answer those for you in the questions or comments below. If y'all have any questions in regards to basics that you should be adding to your closet, maybe things that don't necessarily help your closet, or if you would like to see a video on anything that maybe you wanted me to go over, Definitely list that again below, and I'd love to read those comments from you guys. If y'all liked anything that y'all saw here, please hit that subscribe button. I do make videos as much as I possibly can. Again, you can find me on Instagram at Lux and Labelist. That's where I post the most content, and you can keep updated with me there on different style trends. I also post my outfits and where I've gotten them. I also have a link on my Instagram, which I will actually post below as well to each outfit that I've paired together so that you be able to get them as well if you like them at all. Uh, thank you so much and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.